Let's take a look at a poem by Tracy K. Smith. She's a Pulitzer Prize winner and has been a poet laureate of the United States, and it's called The Good Life. So this is Tracy K. Smith. I wanted you all to see her. And by the way, this is a really useful website, the Poetry Foundation. And her poem is included in Poetry 180, which is a great collection of 180 poems originally gathered by this guy over here, Billy Collins, when he was Poet Laureate of the United States, and now the site is maintained and updated uh, by the Library of Congress. And I do have a video on Introduction to Poetry, and today we're looking at The Good Life. So I will read it. When some people talk about money, they speak of it as if it were a mysterious lover who went out to buy milk and never came back. And it makes me nostalgic for the years I lived on coffee and bread, hungry all the time, walking to work on payday, like a woman journeying for water from a village without a well, then living one or two nights, like everyone else, on roast chicken and red wine. Okay, so it's a very short poem, and... The, the title really tells us a lot, The Good Life. This is what she's exploring in the poem. And I think we'll find out that it's also kind of a question she's asking. So she starts out when some people talk about money, um, and we realize that she's talking about some people who don't have a lot of money. So when they speak about money, it's as if it were a mysterious lover who went out to buy milk and then never came back. Um, as if we're mystified, like, how, where did it go? And why did it leave me? <laughs> and I, I had some, you know, I had, I had some money, and then it, it seems to be just gone now. And even if I tried to do something smart with it, um, it, it, it goes. And so money is not faithful. Money disappoints us. Now, she says that thinking about that um, like a time in her life when she didn't have a lot of money. It makes her nostalgic. For the years I lived on coffee and bread, she says, hungry all the time. Coffee and bread. Yeah, because coffee's cheap. Bread is cheap. Uh, these are the basic basics. And she uses the word nostalgia. And nostalgia actually means looking back fondly. So this is interesting. You think about a time of hardship, and in retrospect, it, it actually, you know, you, you see yourself living that previous time, and you kind, of, you kind of miss it. You kind of feel like, yeah, that was hard, but gosh, I was really, I was really alive at that moment. I, I, I didn't have much, but I was very um, aware of myself and my life. I was living close to the bone, we might say. So she has nostalgia for the time when she only had coffee and bread, and also that she had to walk to work, and meaning that she didn't have bus fare or subway fare or gas money in the car, you know, to fill the car. So there had to be the walk to work. And, you know, walking to work, was, it, was that so bad? It seems kind of tragic, but Maybe it, maybe it wasn't tragic, because she's looking back fondly. And then she says, like a woman journeying for water from a village without a well. And this is an interesting uh, comparison, this, this idea that uh, she has to walk to work, you know, without transportation, except her own two legs. And that is like journeying for water, meaning like to go get sustenance, to go get money right at the job. Uh, and you're coming from a place that doesn't have sustenance, that doesn't have water. So there's no well at home, I have to go out and get water. There's no money at home, I have to go out to my job and, and get money, earn money. And it's as if there's a great um, urgency about this trip then. There's a very important purpose to this trip. And 
maybe when we're more comfortable, we lose that sense of purpose, that, that edge that hunger gives us, right? So then she goes on and says, then living, presumably like after payday, one or two nights like everyone else. So she imagines that everyone else lives on roast chicken and red wine. Roast chicken is now this abundant, luxurious thing, right? It's a luxury, and wine is definitely a luxury after having just coffee and bread. And wine in particular has a sense of high class about it or refinement, the good life. So let's think about this. What is the good life? In the poem, it seems as if when she's looking back at being poor, she's, she's remembering that when she was poor, she thought of the chicken and the red wine as the good life, that having money was the good life. But let's think a little further because she's writing this from a place of comfort, looking back at that time, reflecting on how maybe that was the good life. Maybe being poor and not having transportation money made her extra thankful for the chicken and the wine those one or two nights because it was only one or two nights. It was so precious, so appreciated. Maybe the good life is a life of gratefulness, of thankfulness, and maybe thankfulness is keener when we're not so comfortable and when we don't have as much. So yes, the good life was a goal back then. Like someday I'm going to get to the good life. I'm not going to have coffee and bread and, and not have money for the subway or the car, uh, you know, fill up the car with gas. Someday that's going to be the good life. Maybe not. Maybe this already is the good life. The, even the struggling, even the lack, because there's such appreciation. There's such thankfulness when, when we do have the chicken and the wine nourishing in spirit, nourishing in body. That's the good life, appreciating that. And I, I suppose she's not saying that it's not possible to have thankfulness just because you are comfortable, but the ambiguity in the poem is interesting to me. Like, does the good life refer to that goal? Someday I'll have money and plenty and comfort, or does it refer to the life of lack? when we were so um, purposeful about work and when we were so um, appreciative of the good things that did come. So that's The Good Life by Tracy Smith. And if you have something to say about The Good Life, please leave your ideas in the comments. And do like the video and subscribe if you're enjoying my little talks about literature and writing. See you next time.